This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. That wonderful TV year, 1980. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Way Free Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Now, I've collected TV Guide Fall Preview issues over the years and thought it would be fun to talk about which shows made it, which didn't, and which ones we actually watched. Okay. And we've done this before, but right. now it's 1980, which was a big year for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, 1980 Fall TV had a few hits and many failures, as always. Mm-hmm. There were only 14 new shows that year. There were normally close to 20 or 21. Mm-hmm. There was an actor's strike that pushed most new shows into late fall, like like November and December, which back oh. then you never did. Yeah. So starting with Saturday Night and Breaking Away on ABC, one of a long tradition of remaking movies as TV shows. And, you know, we've discussed before yeah. how successful that is. <laughs> It's a bicycle racing family drama mm-hmm. with Sean Cassidy. Ooh, 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 he's a cutie. And Jackie Earl Haley in Which an early role. It had to be an early role, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only seven of eight episodes actually aired. I don't think I ever watched that. I saw the movie, of course. Yeah. But. Slightly more popular and long lasting was Hill Street Blues mm-hmm. on NBC. Really the prototype for later cop dramas yes. in the 90s and beyond. Mm hmm. Began as a low-rated but highly reviewed series, mm-hmm. NBC was struggling and left it on. Yeah. If they hadn't been so struggling, it probably would have been gone. Yeah. It won eight Emmys its first year. Mm-hmm. It won 98 Emmys during its run. Wow. <laughs> Most of the cast seemed to go to theater after its run. Mm-hmm. It was the first major success for Stephen Bochco, who ended up having a whole empire of his own. Yes, indeed. And it ran for seven seasons. Did you watch it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't think I did. I, you know, I was never, like, every week or anything, but uh-huh. I, I watched them, you know. It was probably really one of the first serialized TV um, cop shows. Right, because normally it was Bad Guy of the Week, and that was like it. Like a dragnet and, and, and type a big, thing, yeah. At the end, and that yeah. was it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, this was very much a, a different style of show, yes. which mm-hmm. changed, changed cop dramas and most dramas going forward. Yes. Less influential was Secrets of Midland Heights on CBS, a nighttime soap opera based in a Midwest town. B.B. Besh, an early role for Linda Hamilton, and Lorenzo Lamas. Yeah, that didn't last very long either. (laughs) Six out of eight episodes actually aired. Don't remember that one at all. (laughs) Now, this next one I remember at least the name of. I don't know if I ever watched it, but I remember Freebie and the Bean. Now, this was another TV show based on a movie. Oh, maybe that's why I remember it. You probably remember the movie. It was about buddy cops. Mm -hmm. An early uh, early work for Hector Elizondo Mm -hmm. and Tom Mason, whoever Tom Mason is. Nine episodes. Mm -hmm. These shows really didn't last very long. Now, before I move on, note... All those shows premiered on Saturday. Yeah. Including one of the classic shows of the 1980s. Yeah. (laughs) Nothing is on Saturdays anymore. Because the networks gave up on Saturday night. And I don't know why. Yeah. But Sunday night, those amazing animals (laughs) on ABC. That's incredible. (laughs) Well, in fact, it's a spinoff of That's Incredible. Yes. It's really what passed for reality shows in 1980. Yes. Burgess Meredith... Priscilla Presley and Jim Stafford were the hosts. That was a one and done, just one season. Mm -hmm. Monday night, Ladies Man on CBS. A token male at a woman's magazine and wackiness ensues. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Pressman Uh, starred on that show, along with other people that I did not recognize at all. Well, okay. 16 episodes. Now that same title will later be used in a 1999 sitcom. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Tuesday night, Harper Valley PTA on NBC. And that was also a movie first. Also, the, but the movie was based on a song. Yes. So you're really spreading it out by this point. Stretching it up quite a bit. Barbara Eden returns to series television about a woman fighting the power in a small southern town. Mm-hmm. She even played her evil twin in a black wig in one episode, a la Genie. Oh, goodness. <laughs> this was one of Sherwood Schwartz's last productions. You know, I can't see this as Sherwood Schwartz. It's not wacky enough, no. but I don't know. But it did run for two seasons. Mm-hmm. 
Too Close for Comfort on ABC. This was very popular. T Ted Knight returns to series television, based on actually a British series, mm -hmm. but a father with two daughters living downstairs. He's also a cartoonist. Nancy DeSalt played his wife. Mm -hmm. Deborah Van Valkenburg played the brunette daughter. Mm -hmm. Lydia Cornell played the blonde daughter. Mm -hmm. With future Hollywood Square Jim J. Bullock as the obvious but not stated gay man. Yes. <laughs> Three seasons on ABC, the show moved to first-run syndication in 1984 and ran for three more seasons after that. This happened a lot on shows in the 80s because syndication of, of first-run shows really got started at that point. Mm -hmm. The final season was renamed The Ted Knight Show with major cast changes. And, you know, you have to remember, too, that back then there wasn't the cable networks right. that did all the shows either. Oh, no. So those first-run syndications were sort of like the cable channels of today. Yeah. You know, Pretty in much. a lot of ways. Pretty much. Flamingo Road on NBC, another primetime soap in a southern town with Mark Harmon and Howard Duff and Morgan Fairchild in her first major role. That ran for two seasons. Mark Harmon was really in a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Wednesday night, Enos on CBS, a Dukes of Hazard spinoff. Deputy Enos moves to L.A. Wackiness ensues. Sonny Schroyer reprises the role he was born to play, apparently, because he never did anything after this. One and done. I never watched Dukes of Hazard no. or any of its no. spinoffs. I... Not to say anything bad about them because I didn't watch them, but, you know. It just wasn't for, for yeah. us. Thursday night. Magnum P.I. on CBS. Mm -hmm. Tom Selleck and his mustache star. John Hillerman as the long-suffering butler of the unseen Robin Masters estate where Magnum lives. Did they ever introduce Robin Masters? or? They inferred very highly in the last couple seasons that Hillerman was That's Robin Masters. That's what I thought. Actually, I seem to remember something yes. like that. Now, this kicked off Donald Bel Belisario's empire, mm -hmm. Quantum Leap. JAG, NCIS. Mm -hmm. So this was what really got him started. Yes. Many, many guest stars dropped by, including Frank Sinatra in his last role. <laughs> Only Love Boat had more stars. Oh, gosh. This is this laundry list. of If, if anybody had, was on a 60s TV show or your 70s TV and show. And wanted a vacation in Hawaii. Exactly. Yes. Magnum P.I. Hey, can I be on your show? Because I want a trip to Hawaii. <laughs> there were also crossovers with Murder, She Wrote and <laughs> Simon and Simon. The lead was killed off in Season 7, but fans demanded a do-over in Season 8, and they got it. <laughs> it's a Living on ABC, a sitcom about waitresses on the top floor of a hotel restaurant. Mm -hmm. This was the show that brought Ann Jillian to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Barry Youngfellow, Crystal Bernard, later for, from Wings. Yes. Uh, Susan Sullivan, mm -hmm. also starred during the run. This was a show that ran for two seasons on ABC and then returned in first run syndication in 1985 for four more. So it was like 80 to 82, two seasons. Then it skipped all the way to 85, and then it did four seasons in syndication. Oh, jeez. Bosom Buddies on ABC. This is a classic. <laughs> When two guys can't find a cheap apartment, what do you do? Well, you dress up as women to live in an all-female apartment building, of course. Of course. <laughs> Some guy named Hanks got his yeah. first role in the show. I don't know what ever happened whatever to him. Whatever happened to him, yeah. Peter, Peter Scolari, the other one, co-starred, mm -hmm. <laughs> along with Donna Dixon and Wendy Jo Sperber. The drag elements were minimized into the second season. It only ran two seasons. It seems like it was much longer than that. Yeah. But... It really wasn't. But I, I guess just because it's so iconic because of Tom Hanks. Yeah, basically. You know, it could, you could never put that on now. Oh, no. No. And then Friday night, I'm a big girl now Ooh. on ABC. <laughs> Diana Canova, who was previously on Soap and the same producers made this show, mm -hmm. is a newly single mother. And her dad, Danny Thomas, returning to series TV, that was a big thing mm -hmm. in 1980, moves in. Wackiness ensues. But it wasn't quite wacky enough because it only lasted one season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty sparse for the new offerings there. Yeah, 1980, again, only 14 new shows. Uh, and so many of them were 
based on a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so many of them went to first run syndication fairly but quickly. But there, there was at least one that really made a big splash with Hill Street Blues, and, and there's some that you can still hear references to on other things today. Yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't Hi there, a Mr. Rash. <laughs> <laughs> so. So. If you want to try to find any of those online, you might be able to. Mm-hmm. But while you're there, you can also check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>